Let's take a look at the second part of dimensional analysis. And we're going to start with metric conversions. And this is the way I'm going to introduce my method of doing dimensional analysis, which, which I've found over the years tends to be um, pretty understandable to most people. And once you get this method down, there's no memorization. It tends to be foolproof. And if you do it correctly, I will almost guarantee you that you will get the correct answer on any dimensional analysis problem that you do because we're just going to look at canceling units. If we cancel off the units, we've got the correct units at the end, then there's almost no way we can get these sort of questions wrong. If you haven't yet watched the Dimensional Analysis 1 video about the metric ladder and what the metric ladder is, uh, make sure you look at that because I'll use something throughout this that I call the metric ladder and um, that previous video will help you understand what I'm talking about when we get to those parts. So what is dimensional analysis? Dimensional analysis is just kind of a fancy word for changing units, all right? So um, converting maybe between kilograms and grams or converting between grams and pounds going from the metric system into the English system. It could also be something as simple as changing money. That could be changing pennies into dollars. It could be changing um, money different currencies as you travel around the world. It can also be things like gas mileage, looking at how gas mileage changes, so miles um, per gallon um, or kilometers per liter. We can convert between all of those using these simple methods of dimensional analysis. So when would you ever use this outside of school? Actually, I think dimensional analysis is something that will um, pop up in your life quite frequently. And here's just some sort of examples that of times when you might use this. Let's say you're going on a trip with five friends. They convince you to drive, um, and they say that they're going to pay you gas money ahead of time because you don't have any money to buy gas. So you figure out it's 100 miles away. You know roughly um, how much gas you're going to consume. You've got five friends. All of that, figuring out how much each one of them owes you, that is dimensional analysis. Likewise, maybe mom's going to throw you a pizza party. Um, you want to have 21 people there. You know, each person eats about three slices. You could very easily figure out how much money it's going to cost mom to throw you this party using these simple methods of dimensional analysis. There are three oversimplified rules of dimensional analysis, especially right now, right here. Um, number one in the way that I teach it is that you write down what you know. Every equation that you run into for dimensional analysis has to give you something to start with. So sometimes people will call this the given. Write down what is given. Um, for now, I'll just call it write down what you know. Then we're going to set up conversion factors to cancel out the units. In science, and oftentimes in real life, we're, not, we're never dealing with just numbers. We're always dealing with numbers that mean something. So we'd never write down 10, because we don't know if that means $10. 10 meters, 10 gallons. You have to explain what the units are, which I think makes this easier. And then the last step, we're going to solve the problem. So let's look at a practice problem. I've got convert 93.16 meters to centimeters. I've got the three simple rules down there at the bottom. And um, I'm going to start this off. So I'll start with green at the beginning to write down what I know. And I'll explain what that means. Up here, the only thing I'm given is this 93.16 meters. So that is what I know. If this was a long word problem, I might have to sort of figure out, well, what's given to me? What do I already know before I start this? It's pretty straightforward here. So I write down 93.16 meters. I'm going to switch out my color just so I leave only what we know in green. The next part is to set up a conversion to cancel the units. Let me show you what that means. I don't want my answer to be in meters. And right now, I've got 93.16 meters. I want my answer to be over here in centimeters. So I have to get rid of meters. The only way to get rid of meters is to set up some sort of conversion factor. And this is a division line with meters on the bottom. And one thing hopefully you recall is that this is over 1. Anything over 1 is itself. So now you can see we're starting to set up an equation. Okay. So I've got meters. Now what will happen, because these meters are on opposite sides of the line, is that these meters are going to cancel out. Now, 
I can say that I want to turn my meters into centimeters, which means I can put it right up here because I've got a conversion factor that will show me turning meters into centimeters. So now I've got the metric ladder down in the corner. The metric ladder from the previous video explains what the prefix is and how I convert this. So again, I've set this up. I've got meters on the bottom right here and I've got centimeters on the top of my equation up here. Because I'm trying to get rid of meters, I'd like my answer in centimeters. So I come down here and I find centi. Centi is right here. It says one centi. Remember, I can change this because we're dealing in meters. So as I do this, this becomes centimeter. I apologize for the writing. That becomes meter. And this over here changes to meter. So I've got one centimeter is equal to 0 0.01 meters. I come up here and I find my centi. I've got one centimeter is equal to 0 0.01 meters. Now, all I have to do next is take the whole top row. This is what I think is a simplified version, so I don't have to deal with fractions. I take 93.16 times 1, which you may know is 93.16. Now, I still have centimeters up here, so I'm going to write centimeters. And then on the bottom, I have 1 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.01. I don't have any units down here because they've all canceled out. Now all I have to do is take out my calculator and do 93.16 divided by 0 0.01 and I get my answer which is 9,316 centimeters. I always have to show what it is. What I've just done here is I've converted 93.16 meters into centimeters and saying that it's 9,316. Let's look at another one. Let's go ahead and try another one. We've got 86.44 meters into millimeters. First thing, remember, I need to figure out, well, what do I know? What's already given to me? I can see that right up here in 86.44. So that's the first thing I do. I write down what I know, which is 86.44 meters. The next thing I need to do, number two down there, says that I need to set up the conversion to cancel units. Now, I don't want my answer in meters. I want my answer in millimeters. Right now, I'm in meters, which means I need to have meters down here. Again, remember, this is technically over 1. Um, and the reason I have, need to have meters down at the bottom is to cancel out these two meters. Now, I look down here, and I'm, I'm trying to get my answer in millimeters. I look down here, and I see milli down at the bottom. And it says 1 milli is equal to 0 .001 units. Remember, because we're dealing in meters here, we change this to meters, which means this changes to meters, and this suffix changes to meters. Apologize for the writing. But now it says one millimeter is equal to 0 .001 meters, which means I can put millimeters right here, and these units are going to cancel out because they're on opposite sides of the line. And now the only thing I have left is millimeters. That's what I want my answer in. So I can just go ahead and fill this out using the metric ladder. It says one millimeter, one millimeter is equal to 0 0.001 meters, is equal to 0 0.001 meters. At this point, because I'm in millimeters, I take out my calculator, and the top row is 86.44 times 1, which is 86.44. Don't forget the units. That's millimeters. And then the bottom is 1 times 0 0.001, that equals 0 0.001, and there's no units down there. I type in 86.44 divided by 0 0.001, and I get 86440, don't forget this, millimeters. So what you've just told me is that in 86.44 meters, there are 86,440 meters. Again, some of these are oversimplified. We're just learning the process of dimensional analysis. Once you get this down where you're canceling units, it's next to impossible to get them wrong. So, convert 6,372 millimeters to centimeters. Again, this is why I always say it's a good idea to memorize the metric ladder. 
so that you can easily convert between metrics at any time. Now, um, this one's going to be a two-step problem because as you look, if we find milli down here, the bottom, if you go back, I apologize, we find milli down here at the bottom, um, it says we can convert milli, remember this is all going to change to meter because we're dealing with length, so this is going to be millimeter and we're going to have 0 .001 meter, but I can only convert between millimeter and meter. But if you look up here in the problem, I want my answer in centimeter. So let me show you what to do if this happens. Um, it requires a little more work, but again, it's, it's a foolproof method once you get it down. We've got, first thing we do is we write down what we know, right here, number one. And what we know is the one that has a number with it, which is 6,372 millimeters. Make sure you leave the units with it. Okay, the next thing I do is set up the conversion to cancel units. I don't want my answer in millimeters, so I need to have a conversion here. And it has to have millimeters down here on the bottom. Otherwise, those won't cancel out. Remember, this is technically over 1, so this will work out just fine. Now, I come down here and I found millimeters earlier, right down here in my metric ladder. It says 1 millimeter is equal to 0 .001 meters, which means I can only turn millimeters into meters with this metric ladder. It says one millimeter is equal to 0 .001 meters. 0 .001 meters. Now I'm going to get out my red pen here and cancel some things. This millimeter and this millimeter are going to cancel because they're on opposite sides of my division line. But right now my answer is in meters. If I was going to stop right here, my answer would be in meters. I don't want it in meters. I want it in centimeters. So I need to keep on working. I know I'm not done yet because for some reason I'm in meters. But I can easily get rid of that with another step. All I have to do is put meters down here at the bottom. And I know I want my answer in centimeters. So I come down here and I look and I see on my ladder, uh, my metric ladder, it says one centimeter is equal to 0 0.01. Again, this is going to change to meters which means I can turn meters into centimeters. And I come back down here, it says one centi, one centi meter is equal to 0 0.01 meters, is equal to 0 0.01 meters. Let me get out my red pen because I know that this is going to cancel and this is going to cancel. And the only units I have left right now are centimeters, which means I can stop because I want my answer in centimeters. So now all I have to do is get out my calculator. I take the whole top row and multiply them together. So I have got 6,372 times 0 .001 times 1 equals 6.372, don't forget the centimeters, centimeters. I'm going to have to change color because I ran off the page centimeters. Then take the whole bottom row, which is 1 times 1 times 0 0.01, that equals 0 0.01. There's no units there. I divide 6.372 divided by 0 0.01. I hit the enter button and I get an answer of 637.2 and I can't forget about my units, centimeters. So what I've just said is that 6,372 millimeters is equal to 637.2 centimeters. Now I know that some people can easily just move the decimal back and forth. But again, I'm trying to teach dimensional analysis. I'm trying to teach this process of writing down what you know, canceling the units, and then solving. Because dimensional analysis problems are going to become much, much, much more complicated as we go. If you get this process down, you'll get those right just as easily as all the other ones. Let's go ahead and do one more for practice. Number one, write down what you know. Right up here, I know that I have 7,129 milligrams, so I write that down. 7,129 milligrams. Second thing I need to do 
is get rid of that milligrams because I want my answer in kilograms. So even if you can't remember what to do next, you can always remember this step. My answer can't be in milligrams, so I gotta get rid of it. And the only way to get rid of it is coming up with a conversion factor. So I've got milligrams down at the bottom. Um, in the future, you'll see that I don't write this over one anymore. You just start to get used to it, and it doesn't have to be over one, but I did it here just to show you that it can be over one. Now, I see milligrams, and I'm trying to get into kilograms. So I see milligrams down here because I see one milli. Again, this is milligram now because this is gram. We're dealing in grams. And this changes to gram. And I see that all I can do is change one milligram into 0 0.001 grams. So I've got milligram down here on the bottom. I can only put grams up here because that's down here on the ladder, that's the only conversion I have. I see it says one milli, one milligram is equal to 0 0.001, is equal to 0 0.001 grams. Now, let me cancel out these units. Milligrams and milligrams are going to cancel because they're on opposite sides of the line. If I stop doing anything right now, my answer would be in grams because that's the only unit I have left. I don't want my answer in grams, remember? I want it in kilogram. So I gotta keep going. I need another conversion factor. Um, I need something with grams on the bottom to get rid of the other grams. And I'm trying to get my answer in kilograms. I look down here, there's kilo, and it looks like this is kilogram. And technically, now that everything has changed, I have one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So I can put kilogram here, and it says one kilo, one kilogram, is equal to 1,000 grams. I cancel out any units that will cancel across the line. It looks like grams is going to cancel. Grams will cancel. The only thing I now have left is kilograms. That's exactly what I want my answer in. So I'm done with step two. I go to step three, which is solve the answer. To do that, I take the whole top roll and multiply it together. So I take one, uh, I'm sorry, 7,129 times 0 .001 times 1, and this equals 7.129. Don't forget the unit, which is kilogram. Then I do the bottom. 1 times 1 times 1,000 gives me 1,000. And if you need the calculator, use your calculator. So 7.129 divided by 1,000 is going to give you 0 0.007129 kilograms. What you've just told us is that 7,129 kilograms is or milligrams is equivalent to 0 0.007129 kilograms. Uh, so you can find lots of practice for these online. Um, just look up converting or look up dimensional analysis for metrics, and there are lots of things to help you practice even more of these. But we start to run into the problem that you get metrics down. You can convert between milligrams and grams and grams and kilograms. But what happens if you need to convert between miles and meters or miles and kilometers or any of those things? Um, also, what happens if you need to convert meters per second into miles per hour um, or some larger number that you might deal with in physics or in earth science? And what happens when you run into things like moles per gram and stuff like that in chemistry? Well, we'll look at that in the next video, um, Dimensional Analysis 3, where we're converting units of all kinds. And I'll show you that everything you've learned right here, those basic steps, Number one, you write down what is known. Number two, you just start canceling the units, and then you finally solve it. It works just as easily when you're going between metric and English, and just as easy if you're converting speeds, shown on here, um, or just about anything else in dimensional analysis as well. So check out Dimensional Analysis 3, Converting Units.